Just be so grateful with these first few breaths for our meditation practice. And as you physically settle in, I would just invite you just to close your eyes. Allow the muscles in your face and your jaw, your shoulders to relax. And let's just each, for just these first few breaths, just really honor the fact that we have shown up. That somewhere along the way, we have found value in our moments of stillness, our moments of practice, our moments of self-discovery. And so just take a few breaths here, breaths of gratitude for the showing up. And as everything begins to just settle and you feel that connection to your breath, Hang on to it. Let it be an anchor both in these moments that we'll share and let it be an anchor once these moments have passed. And I'd like for us just to continue along this journey of looking at the premise of mindful living. And what does that look like? What does it look like in all the minutes of our life? There's so many books out there. There's so many people's opinions that we can read. But I think for each of us, we need to define what does mindful living look like for me? Because we have to start somewhere and it has to be in a way that works for us. Because just like your meditation practice, mindful living is not something you try to achieve or you that you could fail at. It's just something that you know you want to have as a part of your everyday existence. And so just think, in these first just moments that we're gonna to share together. When I say the term mindful living, what do you see? What does that look like for you? Just picture how you show up for yourself, how you show up for your relationships, how you show up in your car when you drive down the street, how you engage with your meals, this idea of mindful living can touch every facet of our being. It can determine our bedtime. It can determine our time that we wake up, how we move our body, what we put into it, what we watch on the television. There's so many parts. And so I would ask you in this moment, what does it look like for you currently? And what's one area where you'd like to begin to increase the mindfulness just a bit more. So the definition of mindful living, it really is all about this present moment. It is this concept that we don't worry about what has already passed. And at the same time, we don't worry about what hasn't even come yet. And I wanna pause for just a second and think about that word worry. And I want you to make sure you give yourself a break and I give myself a break. Just because we, we stop and we have a little thought towards something, or we have a, an emotional reaction, it doesn't mean that we have failed at this idea of mindful living, but worry, the worry that they talk about in all the texts and all the teachings is when it becomes all consuming when all you can think about is the stuff that's already passed, or all you can think about are these things that haven't even happened. That's when worry becomes a barrier to our mindful living. So just be sure that you give yourself grace. And if your mind goes one way or the other, just notice that and then come right back here. Because as we breathe in, and as we breathe out, there's the present moment. And then as we breathe in again, and as we breathe out, there is the next present moment. And 
doesn't mean we're not responsible and it doesn't mean we don't plan and take care of things for in, our, in our lives. It just means that we learn to experience the miracle of this moment. And I know that if you're going through a trial or if you're experiencing any kind of suffering, sometimes this moment is a lot. But if you'll stay with it, the beauty will begin to unfold even amidst the suffering, even amidst the trials. And so along this path today, I wanna to give us this metaphor that will help us maybe have a concrete connection to learning to live in the present moment, mindfully aware of the miracle of it. And the metaphor is the life of the caterpillar. And I truly don't think it's an accident that we have this little critter in nature as an example to us on this spiritual path that we're on. I don't think it's an accident that the caterpillar looks a certain way as we see him and as we know him to be and then he looks very different later on. Because just like the lessons that the trees give us, I think there is a lesson for humanity in the example of the caterpillar. And so just get that visual in your mind of the caterpillar that you've seen or that you've watched on television or seen in the magazine. These very slow, little thick, not probably very attractive little critters. And they have a purpose and their life is very short, but they don't worry about the shortness of their life or what's coming at the end because their purpose is to eat all the vegetation they're supposed to eat to grow to the size they're supposed to grow to fulfill their purpose, to be able to create this cocoon of transformation and then for us to be able to marvel at the sight of the butterfly. And while we don't get in to the mind or the brains or the thoughts of what a caterpillar possesses, the example of that little fellow says, in this moment, my purpose is to eat. My purpose is to grow. And I won't let anything distract me from that purpose, one moment, one breath, one bite at a time. And I know it's such a simple, almost childlike reference, but just think his life is only two or three weeks long, but he doesn't fret over the fact that I only have two or three weeks and I need to do something different. No, he just eats and breathes and lives the purpose he was meant to live. And so in our lives, what does that look like? First off, what's our purpose? What's our contribution that we are each meant to make in this world? And we may not know that answer right now. And that answer may shift over time, over the years. But as you start to connect to your purpose, I truly believe through the example of the caterpillar and the experiences that I have had, present moment, mindful living will be so much more attainable. Because otherwise, we're just seeking to try to figure out the how and the why and the what. But when we can breathe and be and live with purpose, the miraculousness of the present moment will be ours. And so I wanna ask us each, myself included, those soul questions that I've posed before, but I really want that third question to be one that we sit with for just a bit. So let me start with the question of who am I? Who am I? Who are you? At the core 
of the essence of your spirit. Who am I? And then the second question ask, what do I want? What do you want? What is your heart's desire? What do you want? And as those two questions just kind of rumble around in our head and in our heart and our spirit, the third question ask, what is my purpose? What is my unique contribution to this world that no one else will make but me? What is my purpose? And in that fourth question, I don't think it's an accident the way that these are ordered out. The fourth question says, and what am I grateful for? Because just like the example of the caterpillar, once we start to understand our purpose, the gratitude just flows. You don't have to pause and try to ponder, what am I grateful for? But instead, that miraculousness of the present moment casts this light on gratitude in a way that we can't even imagine. So let's just let these questions just sit with us. If your mind starts to go somewhere else, picture that caterpillar breathing in one breath, one moment, one little bite at a time. Who am I? What do I want? What is my purpose? And what am I grateful for? as we each just continue breathing in, breathing out, letting those questions just stir up our heart and our spirit. I want to shift our image from that caterpillar to that cocoon, that chrysalis. You've all seen them, this little thing that just hangs so delicately from a branch, from a roof line, from wherever you've seen it. That's the time of transformation. And if I take that metaphor and I apply it to our lives, I see the time in the cocoon as our time that we show up just like now. These are the moments of transformation where there's protection from the distractions. There's protection from the elements. And it's our time to just be with our own path our own journey, our own transformation. And then you know that after a couple, three weeks, a little slit comes in the side of that cocoon, that chrysalis, and all of a sudden, this creature emerges that you almost can't believe that it was a caterpillar when it began. It's beauty. It's uniqueness. It brings joy. It makes you smile. 
people pause when they see butterflies and just watch them. That's our journey. We all have this mindful way of living. One moment, one breath, one bite, like the caterpillar at a time. We have this time, this protection, meditation, our yoga practice, our service, just like the time they're in the cocoon where we're transforming just a little bit each time until all of a sudden different parts of us in our life begin to emerge like this butterfly it may not be the whole us all at once but it will be parts of us along the way your service will begin to look a little different your practice will look a little different. Your relationships will look different. And most of all, how we see ourselves will look drastically different. No longer seeing yourself as this little caterpillar critter, but this incredible butterfly. And so my wish for each of us is that we take this simplistic metaphor and let it be a guide toward this mindful way of living. Be okay with being a caterpillar for a while, one moment, one breath, one bite at a time. Practice that enough and all of a sudden it truly will become your way of life. And then along the way, the butterfly begins to emerge. Namaste.